So let me try and record. Okay, I think it's recording already. Is it blinking from your end? Is the recording icon showing from your end? Record, okay. Is it recording? Okay, it's recording, thank you. Thank you. So in this class, we're going to be discussing the lost sciences of Africa. Somebody asked this question um, in the previous class. So we're going to see some of it in this class and um, they are divided into two. So we're taking it together. Okay, the lost sciences of Africa one and the lost sciences of Africa two. So all this while, since unit five of module one, we've been looking at sciences in different Western epochs, ancient, medieval, contemporary, 21st century, 20th century, okay? It was 20th century that we just finished discussing. So now we're going to come back home, home in Africa where we are, okay? To see what are those sciences of Africa? They are lost, do, all right? That's why we call them lost sciences of Africa. Okay, so first, metallurgy from metal metallurgy in uh, a brief history of this in 1978 you have an anthropologist peter schmidt and an engineering professor donald avery these two people anthropologists they announced that between the years 1,500 and um, 2,000 years ago, we Africans, at least some Africans, who lived in the shores of Lake Victoria, Lake Victoria is found in East Africa in Tanzania, that they produced um, steel. And what is steel? A malleable mixture of iron and carbon elements used in producing tools and weapons. We're discussing the lost sciences of Africa. And we began by looking at metallurgy. And what that means is that Africans were known for the production of metal, act of producing metal. So we're saying that the people who discovered these were Peter Schmidt and Donald Avery. They were the ones who made this discovery saying that between the years 1005 and 2000 years ago, Africans who were residing on the shores of Lake Victoria, Lake Victoria found in Tanzania, they were instrumental to the production of steel. And we said, what is steel? Steel is a malleable mixture of iron and carbon. And they, make, they use steel in the production of tools and weapons. So people have started sending all sorts of all sorts of questions instead of listening. Okay, just listen. You think I should be talking and be attending to your requests? It's not possible now. Okay? Try and reason it out. It's not possible. I should add you to WhatsApp group while I'm speaking. Okay? Try and be a bit sensitive and sensible, please. So for example. The Ajakuta Steel Company in Kogi, all right, of Nigeria. It was built with the aim, the aim that built it, that led to its build, was for it to be able to supply raw materials to the tool industries. So it's corroborating the idea that Africans have always known to be instrumental to the production of steel, steel being used for the production of tools and weapons. So according to one of the discoverers, Shimit, the method Africans used was to preheat first draft furnaces. They preheated. And he said that the method was technologically more, ad more advanced, more sophisticated than any one developed in Europe until the mid 20th century. So those who discovered that Africans were involved in metallurgy, they also found that, that the method that Africans were using in producing this steel was far more advanced, was far more sophisticated 
than what was used in Europe at a latter time, which was in the mid 19th century. So it's, it's a testament to the idea that, or to the fact that Africans had science, and one of it being the act of making metal, especially steel, that was used in the production of, um, production of tools and weapons. So this Shimids, he went further to say that to be able to say that a technologically superior culture developed in Africa more than 1,005 years ago, it overthrows popular and scholarly ideas that technological sophistication developed in Europe, but not in Africa. You know that there are conspiracy theorists that usually undermine the advances found in Africa, okay? So Schmitz is trying to even uh, uh, undermine this theory to say that it is a lie, that it is not true that Africans, they've always had or they had ideas that are much more sophisticated than what was later developed in Europe. And that it is not true that Europe had a more or have had at the time a more sophisticated technology than Africa. So the technology, it was, however, not confined to Lake Victoria, even though, even though, even though it was, um, it was on Lake Victoria that it was developed, it was not confined to Lake Victoria. So further investigation showed that there was a widespread distribution of early Iron Age industrial sites in industrial sites in West Lake and neighboring areas like Rwanda and Uganda. Even though the act of metallurgy was found on the shores of Lake Victoria in Tanzania, it was not confined to it. It was still distribution of Iron Age was found in places, other places in East Africa like Uganda and Rwanda. Okay. Okay, so um one minute, let me see. I, I can't seem to close this chart. I, I, I can't close this chart because of the kind of device I'm using. I'm not using my computer because it's down. Okay. So um, we just concluded um, discussion on metallurgy is distracting to me as well. We just concluded distraction on, I mean, we just concluded discussion on metallurgy. So we're moving on to astronomy, okay? We're looking, remember we're discussing the lost sciences of Africa. We just discussed metallurgy, where it was found, the places it was found, okay? And how such technology was advanced much more than what was found in, um, in Europe. Now we're moving to the next one, astronomy. So Egyptians, they was, re Egyptians were reported to have made use of the cyclic appearance of the moon to invent the calendar. So invention of calendar is also traced to Africans, particularly Egyptians. And how did they do it? It was traced to the use of cyclic appearance of the moon. So the cyclic appearance of the moon was used to invent calendar. So their initial aim, that's the Egyptians, was to know when to plant their crops, was to know when to plant their crops. So, so the correlation, the coming together of the cyclic movement of the sun with certain festivals and planting seasons is also common in today's Africa. The correlation, that's being able to draw a similarity of the movements in the sun, how the sun orbits, okay? So being able to draw a correlation between the cyclic movement of the sun and uh, some festivals and planting seasons is also common in today's Africa. Excuse me, please. Okay, 
So if you think back, for those of you who grew up in the villages, you may be able to relate with this idea in which uh, people look at the movement of the sun, or maybe, maybe okay, maybe people look at the movement of the sun or, you know, some kind of uh, natural phenomenon as a guidance to when they will plant or when they will harvest and the likes. So could you think of some examples of festivals which take place in your area with the appearance of some heavenly bodies? Can you think of anything like that? For example, in Igbo land, they have New Year festival. Okay, somebody's already mentioning Ocean. New Year festival is one of such. So can you mention a couple of other ones from where you come from? So I'll, I'll be in the chat. Okay, Oju Deoba, Oshun, Agemo, Fish, Eyo, Masquerade, lots of it like that. Okay. Okay, Ramadan. Yes, yes, Ramadan is a typical one now where they look out for, is it moon or sun? They look out for. Ife Oye, okay. Agungun Fish Festival. Oh, nice. Oro. Great. Okay. So I know. So it's not, uh, so it's part of the, all of these things you've mentioned is part of the sciences of Africa that are now lost. At least they were not developed. They are not developed to something that is enviable. All right. In fact, from some of these uh, astronomy, some of these ideas, other parts of the world, Europe, America, they will borrow it and develop it and they will make it their own and you won't recognize it again. And sadly, similar thing, it's also happening. You know, have you observed that the way uh, people don't speak their native languages to their children again, and all these other people, they are coming here to learn things and modify it, and they begin to sell it to us, and by that time, we would appreciate it more, okay? So, so in an attempt to fix dates for their festivals, rituals, optimum planting and harvest times, the Dogon people of Mali, you should note it, Dogon, Dogon people of Mali in West Africa, they acquired a very complex, extremely like very complex knowledge of astronomy. Note the Dogon people of Mali. So what led them to it? They were trying to fix dates for their festivals, for their rituals. They were trying to find out when is the peak when they could do planting and harvest. So because they were trying to do all of this, the Dogon people of Mali and West Africa, they acquired an extremely complex knowledge of astronomy. So their knowledge of the heavenly bodies, which it was revealed, it sent shockwaves throughout the scientific world regarding how complex, how, how sophisticated it is. So for these Dogon people, to make their calendar more accurate, the astronomer priests of many African families like these Dogon people of Mali, they incorporate the rising and setting of certain stars or group of stars into their various calendars. So in the calendar of these Dogon people, they have, they, they, they included in their calendar how certain stars or group of stars, how they rise, how they set, in order for them to have a more accurate calendar, they did this. So one of the stars that is important to these Dogon people is called Sirius. You should note this, Sirius, known as the brightest star in the, in the sky. Sirius is known as the brightest star in the, in the sky. And it is one of the stars important, important or significant to the Dogon people of Mali, okay? Okay, I've seen all your responses. Thank you so much. Hmm? So we'll continue. So many temples and even streets throughout Mexico and Egypt, they are aligned to the rising of Sirius. So you could see how they also borrow out of it. Many temples and streets, throughout Mexico and Egypt, they are aligned to the rising of Sirius. Now, but for the Dagon, the most sacred of their 700 year old tradition, so their tradition is as old as 700, 
this their most sacred tradition doesn't revolve around Sirius, but rather to very to its it's rather revolves to a small and very dense companion star called Sirius B. Sirius B, in other words, it's a lot more significant to these Dogon people than the Sirius that we have talked about in the previous slide. And one thing that characterizes Sirius B is that it can be seen with the naked eye. So therefore, the Dogon extensive knowledge of heavenly bodies, they have extensive, like deep, wide ranging, comprehensive knowledge of heavenly bodies. Particularly this invisible star, which is Sirius B, is a mystery that has sent shock waves around the scientific world. Okay, so, so this information about the astronomy of the Dogon people it was revealed by two French anthropologists. One is called Marcel Grau and the other German Dutlan. They were the ones who uncover the mystery or the, the, the significance of the astronomy of these Dogon people of Mali. And so the source of concern to Eurocentric sciences is that the Dogon, they apparently did not use, they didn't, the Dogon didn't make use of Western technology or its scientific methodology to obtain their results. Remember in previous classes, in the course of this facilitation, we had discussed, we had discussed scientific method. So the astronomy of these Dogon people did not rely on Western technology or scientific methodology in order to obtain results. So it's been reported that Western science is as a result is a research without illumination. So in other words, they even criticize Western science that it's one that moves on or that carries on without illumination. Eastern societies, however, like India and Africa that we belong, we do not have this problem of um, doing research without illumination. And the reason we don't have this problem is because we don't have a distinct bifurcation or separation between science and religion. In Africa, in India, in Eastern sciences, there is a fusion of science and religion. We don't, we don't differentiate them. Philosophy and psychology, history and mythology, they are all fused, or they are all on the same trajectory. Or like in Western science, where they make some kind of clean bifurcation between, between science and religion. And so it's because they make such clean bifurcation between science and religion, that's why they refer to their method of research as one of science without illumination. So all of these, they are viewed as one reality. That's science and religion, psychology and philosophy, history and mythology. They are viewed as one reality and they are closely blended into the structure of daily life. So a man called Hunter Adams, three of the Argonne National Laboratory, he reported that early science made use of both intuitive and empirical methods to make their discover, discoveries. So we are Africans, we don't just make use of empirical method as found in Western science. We also infuse intuitive method. So these Hunter Adams therefore stress that modern science should be revolutionized by combining both methods, that's method of intuition and empiricism in scientific research that is going to do science a whole lot of good if they are able to uh, infuse both into, um, into the research, into their research. Okay. So that ends unit uh, four, which is the lost sciences of Africa one. And what did we discuss there? We discuss metallurgy and we discuss astronomy as sciences of Africa that are now lost. Okay. The two key ideas we discuss there are metallurgy and uh, astronomy. Now to um, the second part, Lost Sciences of Africa too. 
So here you have mathematics, okay? So among the earliest, who are these people drawing stuff on the screen? What kind of human beings are you? Eh? What kind of human beings are you? Can't you just listen without touching everywhere? Okay, so we were talking about mathematics. So among the earliest evidence of the use of numbers in Africa is a carved bone discovered at the fishing site of Ishango on Lake Edward. So what we're saying here is that one of the pointers to the fact that numbers were used in Africa one of the early pointers to that, to the use of numbers in Africa, is the discovery of a bone that was cached. And this discovery was made at the fishing site of Ishango on Lake Edward. Lake Edward can be found in DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo. And so this carved bone dates back to the period between 9,000 BC, that's before Christ, and 6,500 BC. Somebody asked me what AD means, okay? Uh, AD, AD means Annons Domini, the year of the Lord, BC, before Christ, okay? But it's something you could easily check online through a Google search and you'll find it. So 9,000 BC and 6,500 BC before Christ. So discover of these artifacts, the name is Dr. Jean, Jean de Hansling. So he suggested it may have been used for engraving or writing. Now we're looking at mathematics. In the, in the first part, we saw metallurgy and astronomy. Now we're seeing mathematics. So there were various arrangements of numbers on these bones. Remember the bone was, a carved bone was discovered pointing to early use of numbers in Africa. So on this, on this uh, carved bone, there were various arrangements of numbers. And so to the hands link, he discovered this arrangement, it looks like the operation of doubling, maybe like multiplication or addition. And so because it looks like the operation of doubling, it made him to conclude that the bone may have been the artifacts of the, of the people who used a number system based on 10, and who were also familiar with prime numbers and the operation of duplication. However, his counterpart, the counterpart of Hensley, who was also, who also examined the notches, it was used as a lunar calendar. He thinks that it was rather used as a lunar calendar. So as part of mathematics, we have the Yoruba number system. And what, what is it? So it's reported that they have a complex, very complex technical, not quite easy to understand numbering system. And the mathematician called Levy Conant, he calls it the most peculiar number skills in existence. Some of you are taking your um, CMA. There was a question that relates to this and you thought that the answer was not in the option, okay? And you reached out to somebody who was asking me, I said, the answer is right there in the option, okay? So if you pay attention now, if you are that person or those persons are in class, you would see that the answer is here. So uh, Conan said that one has to be a very smart person to handle the Yoruba number system because it, was quite, it is quite complex. That it's a system based on 20, of which there are many examples in Western Africa. And the usual feature of the system is that it relies on subtraction to a very high degree. So if you're conversant with this number system of this set of people, you would understand what is being said that it has a, a characteristics that is quite unusual in that it relies on subtraction to a very high degree. 
So in the study of the Yoruba numerals, it's been stated that the numerals give evidence that the Yoruba have the capacity for abstract reasoning. So because of the complex nature of this Yoruba number system, it also said that it is evident that this set of people, they are very skilled in abstract reasoning, okay? And it's the reason why they could have developed and learned such a system because they are skilled in abstract reasoning. They are quite smart. That's why they are able to develop a numbering system that is complex based on subtraction and the like. So Yoruba, they express 45, for example, as five from 10, from 320s, and in symbolic forms, that's what you have on the screen. So origin of the subtractive system. So early investigations concluded that the origin of this complex system for large numbers is traced to carry counting. They use carry, you know? Before the invention of money, many things were used. Exchange by butter were used in which you could use your goods to get other goods that you needed, but you don't have. They use uh, cowries, they use coin before they arrive at paper. So it's traceable. This particular one is traceable to carry country. So what are carries? Are shells. Carries are shells that are gotten from small snails. Some of you know it, like animals found in India Ocean. And they were also used as money in Africa and South Asia in the old Indies, carries were used. So carry counting was the earliest occasion that required the Yoruba to count in such large denominations. So the procedure for carry counting among the Yoruba was as follows. You should read it, the details are in your course material. The procedure of how they count carry among this group of people being talked under discussion can be found in your course material. So the subtractive principle in the enumeration system, it came from, I mean, originated, the reason why it originated is because of the practice of counting carries by five. And so that's why that this method of carry counting, that's why that it was widely used, many people use it. It's only the Yoruba and a few others that formalize the structure in this unique, subtractive system of counting. So other ways of knowing that certain nation group of people had mathematical knowledge include, you can see it on the screen, through measuring systems like beautiful brass weights for measuring gold dust, currency among the Ashanti of Ghana. Okay, so that reminds me, last week somebody asked a question whether the Ghana mentioned on page 66 under 3.11 during the dark age, where it was said that Ghana, Ghana reached the peak of its civilization is the current modern day Ghana. Somebody asked that question and I wasn't quite sure what the person was saying. So I looked at it, it's not the current day Ghana, it's the Ghana empire of that time Ghana Empire of the time, or the old, uh, the old Ghana, old kingdom of Ghana, I think as your course material stated it, is different geographically, is geographically not connected to the modern state of Ghana that we know. Rather, the Ghana Empire was located in South Sudan, the modern day Mauritia, Mauritania and Mali. Okay, so the Ghana mentioned under the dark age in your course material has nothing to do with modern day Ghana. It was referring to the uh, to the Ghana Empire of the time. It's, it's different in geography from this present day Ghana. So it may also be in the complex network games such as the Shungo children play on play or in mathematical recreations, which are the delight of many Africans. Some of you know some of these games, like the IO, called worry game in some places. And it's of, it, is, it often sharpens one's mental uh, capacity for calculation, okay? So this IO game is quite common in many Nigerian villages. You may wish to find out how it is played in your village. 
So that ends that particular discussion about mathematics, where we touched on the complex system of numbering of the Yorubas. So now we move on to medicine is another area of the lost sciences of Africa. I hope you are following. How many have we done now? Can you, can you list them in the chat for me? The lost sciences of Africa, which and which have we discussed? Astronomy, yes. Ibrahim Fatai, thank you. We discussed astronomy. Which other one? Metallurgy, mathematics, metallurgy. Okay. Okay. Good. So at least origin of subtraction. Good. Okay. At least some people are following. And when you are in class, is not the time to be looking at your course material. All right. You should learn to do the right thing at the right time. Before you come to class, you look at your course material. When you are in class, you listen to explanation. When you are out of class, you look at your course material. You will miss both ways if you're looking at your course material when you are in class. You won't get what the facilitator is saying and you won't get what you're reading, okay? So we'll continue, medicine. Medicine, it has its roots in our continent as well, okay? The Hippocratic oath that uh, physicians went to, is, Hippocrates is a man from Egypt, okay? So African medicine, instances of these are bound in your course material of African medicine, use of herbs and all sorts, okay? And, um, okay, from 17 to... So, okay. So that ends this discussion. Okay, yeah, it ends this discussion. The summary of all that we discussed now, which some of you gave me when I asked. Okay, we've looked at the lost sciences of Africa. That's unit four and five of your module two. And those lost sciences are what are highlighted on the screen. We discussed metallurgy, production of steel. We discussed astronomy, found especially among the Dogon people of Mali. Mathematics, exemplified in the complex numbering system of the Yorubas. Then we examined the Yoruba number system a great deal. Then origin of the subtractive system and medicine, which is the last but not the least. Okay, so we're done. It's time for you to ask your questions, your comments, your concern. And so I will say you should uh, raise your hands. Okay, I can see your hands are up. Um, who am I calling now? Daniel Oguru. I'll ask you to unmute. Unmute yourself and speak. Uh, okay, ma. Good evening, ma. Good evening. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, firstly, I would like to appreciate your kind answer because I was one of those people that wrote an email to you concerning a particular question, TME, and I'm satisfied okay. with that, uh, with that uh, answer you gave. Thank you so much. Thank now, you too. Okay, the first last thing we did, I was not able to ask questions because of time, but I don't know mm -hmm. if I can just ask it and ask for this very present one. Now, Please do go ahead. That, uh, the disturbing, the theory of relativity, I want you to throw more light into it. Why was it so disturbing? I just want to understand. That's number one question. Then the second question, this present one, metallurgy. Uh, can we also say metallurgy, uh, call it, no, so we always call blacksmith people. We always use that word blacksmith. And uh, Africa is the origin of metallurgy. Does it have any relation between blacksmiths and metallurgy? I just, I'm just observing, I just want to ask if there's any relativity between metallurgy and being a blacksmith. 
why they gave that name blacksmith. So those are the two questions. And I'm more of a man. This uh, law science of Africa should have been the first lesson in uh, history of philosophy. I'm only observing, I'm only making a suggestion. It, could have, it should have been because I, it looks as if Africa is where everything starts from. Thank you, ma. Those are the things I just want to know, ma. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Um, theory of relativity, why was it disturbing? Well, the complex nature, I suppose, because it was said that it was just about uh, 21st, 21 scientists who understood it, but despite the obscurity of it, it was also strong enough or significant enough to displace the classical Newtonian from Isaac Newton, Newtonian theory of the time. So, you know, when a revolution is happening, nobody wants change. Maybe I should just use that word that we're all used to. Nobody wants change. Okay. So this is a theory that was barely understood by everyone, just if a, a select few understood it. But despite the, the way it was studied, you know, there are some scientists and even philosophers that their works are very difficult to understand. Despite that, it was still uh, significant enough. It still was kind of revolutionary enough to displace what they had earlier known, which was the Newtonian science. I suppose that's why it was disturbing and worrisome. So okay. that's one. Blacksmith okay. and metal metallurgy. Well, blacksmith, blacksmithing, you know, um, I would, well, I would be willing to say uh, they are the same. Metallurgy is more embracing. Blacksmithing uh, carries some colonial connotation okay. in which, um, th that's to my mind, I think it carries some colonial connotation in which maybe it is the Westerners, the Europeans that tag our metallurgy as blacksmith, you know, okay. from black, you know, you talk okay. about black male, black yes. Maria. Why yes. is blackness, why is things that are not very positive associated with black? Yes. Okay. So they might just be referring to the same process, but the choice of word used, blacksmith could be seen as kind of derogatory, especially oh. in the context of how our metallurgy, the sophistication supersedes theirs, and they want to, and also in the history of colonialism and all that, that metallurgy would seem more, um, should I say, pleasant or welcoming or glorifying, so to speak. That, that's that. Then uh, love science is okay. Maybe it ought to have come first, like something like this is our own kind of thing or what? Yes, Since, yes, yes. Uh, okay. Well, that's... Um, Especially, okay, maybe come first in the discussion of this uh, history of Western science. Exactly. Okay, maybe it's a perspective. Who yes. knows? Maybe when the course material is being reviewed, the reviewer will see the need to prioritize our own and um, something like that. All right? Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Please mute yourself. So I will call... Um, Abu Bak, okay, she, I heard it's not even up. I will call Igbe Festus. Unmute yourself and speak. Festus Igbe. Good evening, doctor. Good evening, sir. Good, good. Uh, I, I want to comment your, on your lecture. In fact, uh, every piece of wall you dropped i understood but my question is on the fox lecture you took before this um okay. regarding war okay uh, you said in the first and the 20th century you mentioned about war you pointed it out as one of the attributes that was uh, discovered there i wanted to find out what about when we heard about first world war second world war 
where were those when what what kind of uh at um at point, uh this is it bomb i'll call it there was not equipment then and we have such war first world war okay yes first world war 1914 to 1918 second world war i think it ended in 1930. and we now okay uh, the the century in which First World War and Second World War was fought, I think it was in the 20th century as well. You think it's not? Hmm? Are you with me? Are we together? Did I lose him or, did, or you lost me? Uh, can they hear me? Can you hear me? You can hear me, okay. Okay, thank you, thank you for telling me. I, I, I couldn't, okay. So I think that First and Second World War, World Wars, 19, First World War, World War was in 1914, was fought between 1914 and 1918, okay? Uh, those wars were fought in the 21st century and they made use of instruments. So we're saying that the 21st century was instrumental to, I mean, also brought about war, which is a, which is a negative um, advancement in science and technology. Igbe Festus, what happened? Did you hear me? I can hear you, doctor. Yeah, I can hear you, doctor. Okay. So I think those wars were first, they were fought in the 20th, 20th century. And you only corroborated what we said about war being brought about then, at least some advanced form of war. Do I answer your question? Very clear. Okay, thank you. That's all right. Okay, so I move on to Monarch. Oh, mute yourself. Okay, good evening, doctor. Can you hear me, ma? Good yes, very clearly. Okay, good evening. Uh, good my evening. hand has been up right from the first class. I saw so your thank, hand, thank you. but your hand yeah. was up before the first class <laughs> was finished. So I noted all of you wanting to cheat. So uh, I deliberately did that. know. Do not, not call you then. <laughs> Thank you so you much. You wait till the class finishes before you raise your hand. I saw it. Okay. Okay, that's noted. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. First Thank of you. all, again, again, a lot of people have really appreciated it, but please permit me to do that again. Um if if um uh, if we if we if we all have all the facilitator turn up the way you do. Trust me, I, I don't see any reason why anybody should fail. Your consistency, your simplicity, and then your time you take to answer question is amazing. And I, I must say that this is this is the best class. So I've never missed your class since I started joining from the second or third week. So thank you so much thank for you. that, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for yes. coming to class. So you're being in thank class, you. all of you is <laughs> encouraging because there are classes <laughs> we will teach and you won't see a single student. It's extremely oh, encouraging. Yeah. I, I think when a class yourself. when a class is enjoyable, when a class is enjoyable, people look forward to it. For someone like me, I look forward to every Friday to be in your class, honestly speaking, because it's really expository and all that. So thank you for that once again. Okay, I have quite I have quite a lot of um questions what? to ask, but okay. I would uh, just maybe ask few so that I'll allow other people to also contribute before our time. Because very soon uh, we'll be going for a echo one on one or something like that. So okay. yeah, so um the first is on you. The first class we did, we talk about the the different epoch, all right, okay. pertaining to pertaining to human history. Mm. Uh, we made mention of the ancient time, the uh, medieval. medieval time, the modern time, and the contemporary time, which are the four mm. epoch. Mm. But then again, for my own further research, I discovered that of course we have prehistoric age, which is not captured in this um, material. 
Mm. And and there were some things I, I, I in the course of this material also which were also not uh, reflected. Things like the Stone Age, things like mm. the Iron Age. I don't know where within this four epoch that this material presented to us. I don't know where they fall into. But I want to be that the ancient, okay. Asian they were all period. under the ancient Asian period. Mm. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Then in in the uh, in the calendar, of course, the calendar we currently use is the Gregorian calendar. Upon exactly. my own research again. Upon yes, my own research it's Gregorian. again. Yes. Okay. It's Gregorian. And and the calendar is counted from the birth of Jesus, right, mm -hmm. up until this moment. Now, if you count the birth of Jesus and then maybe going backward, you will discover mm -hmm. that you discover that the, the 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 existence of man on this planet. Is just less than six thousand years. Okay. Yes, but in this court material, there were some references that has been made to like nine thousand years and all of that. I know that the the AD we use, which is in the year of the Lord, and then mm. the CE and and the BC, which is before Christ. Mm. The way attempt was of course made in order to not to make it more. Not, not to make it religious, which is what brought about the introduction of the CE and the BCE. CE mm -hmm. meaning that the common era and then BCE, which is before the common era. So now I want to know, I want to know, because if you, if you, if you look at some of the content of this material, like I said again, even mm -hmm. in the one you presented to us now, you reference activity, scientific activities dating back to 9,000 years. All right. Okay. Nine thousand uh, yes. years AD. Yes, nine thousand years. Uh, is it AD? Oh, I think it should be BC. I don't. I, I, I can't remember. But there's one of. I didn't quite capture that. I don't know whether when you were making reference to Mali or I can't. I can't quite remember that. So on this calendar stuff, I would need you to help us. You know, um, clarify it, even the calculation, and then, you know, the generally acceptable. You know, uh, globally ca calendar. I don't know how best to really put this question, but I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say here. In essence, okay. let know, me so... begin from your premise. Okay. So you said your premise is that you said the existence of human on the earth is not more mm. than six thousand years. Yes, less than five thousand. I mean, less than less six thousand. I beg your pardon. Mm. Okay, so that's what you said. You now said there are dates here that go further beyond that, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay, so I don't have the answer to this question now, but okay. from your premise that you drew the conclusion, I will investigate from your premise to find out if our existence as human on earth is less than 6,000 years. Ah, okay. I will need to find that out. I don't know the answer. Okay. Okay. So you have more questions? Yes. Another question I want to ask is the um the Malian people. Mm. You also talked about their own science, their own scientific revolution. And part of what you said was that you know scientific science is validated through experimentation and um, um, scientific methods generally. So, mm. but you see the Malian people that their own science, do their own scientific revolution, our scientific discovery of the, mm. is it Cyrus, Cyrus Moon you talked about? Yes, it was not the, Yeah, that it was not based on scientific me method or methodology. Mm. Uh, it was not you see, solely based on that. Okay, it was not solely based on that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, because, you know, if looking at this thing, you will see that, yes, the contention between religion, mm -hmm. right, and scientific method has always been there. Mm -hmm. So, so, so this, this, uh, what, what, what else again, apart from that, what else again, do they use to, to validate this, their own scientific discovery? Great. So what we are saying in that is that Western science, mm -hmm. you know, what we just finished in this class is not Western science. Yes, ma'am. Is rather African science. Exactly. Mali is in Africa. Mm. Okay. So Western science relies heavily on empiricism, mm. the use of sense experience, perception, 
the use mm. of our five senses. Mm. That's what Western and on the scientific method, which we had discussed in this class, that's what Western science relies mm. heavily, mm. solely on. But when you, it comes to Eastern ideas, where we fall as Africa, likewise India, mm. we don't make a bifurcation between intuition and empiricism. Mm. Okay. We don't. Okay. In Western science, they differentiate, like make a clean separation between religion and culture. In exactly. our culture, both are interwoven. Exactly. They are fused. And if you look at our own science strictly with the eye of, if you look at it with the lens, through the lens of Western science, you would want to disparage African science or every science that is not Western as not being scientific enough. Mm, or have mm. not been scientific because of, you know, supremacy of science, so to speak. Now, in this instance, Western science. Mm, mm, so mm. in that slide, we were talking about in Africa, in India, and all these other Eastern cultures, China, how they, reality is fused. Reality is not bifurcated. Reality of science, of culture, of religion is fused in our culture. And that's what makes the difference that made, I, I can't remember the name of the person, recommend that uh, even Western science can do itself a lot of good if it borrows from some ideas, mm. like the one I just explained, yeah. from Africa and other parts of the world that are not Western in Africa. Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. And then finally, I'm going to make a comment before I drop it for other people to ask. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that Africa science needs to be revived. Like you rightly said, that we have a lot on this continent that the world needs to also buy into. So yes. they made us look, yeah, they made us look, uh, look like, you know, nothing good can come out of this place. Whereas mm -hmm. they say Africa is a cradle of humanity. So cradle of civilization. Civilization, so to say. So we, we need to really, we need to, we need to develop our own. Like this uh, um, uh, a traditional medicine you talked about is one area mm. we need to go into. And there are quite yes. a lot of other areas that we need to revive, right? Yes. And yes. then finally, finally, uh, the, the 20th century scientist, scientific revolution, part of which is uh, the biotechnology you talked about earlier in the first class. Uh, mm. In that biotechnology, we have things like the, emergence of a genetic, uh, the, uh, genetically modified organisms and all of that. I also want to say yes. that, yes, in as, much yes. As, why, in as much as it is a blessing to us today, I also want to believe that it also has brought a lot of consequences. Things like cancer we see today and many other things mm. we see. I think they are also mm -hmm. a, product, a product of all this genetically modified food. I went to buy mm. apple the other day because I like to make this thing more real and in a practical term. I don't know if you've noticed, if you go to buy apple, you notice that those big, big ones, mm. right? They are, mm. they, are, they are genetically modified. Mm. Okay? And it was later, somebody opened my eyes to see that if you must buy apple, for example, you have to buy those, those small, small ones, which are mm. uh, the, the organic, those ones that grow organic. Organic ones. Exactly. So yes, in as mm. much as the 20th century has brought a lot of um, technological revolutions and benefits to us. There are also consequences. Yes. I think I just, I just most, started to just, uh, bring up most that. Certainly. Mm. Most certainly. You are very correct. Mm. Most certainly. Mm. Everything with pros has its cones. And of course, exactly. you know, it only happens that it is the war aspect we mentioned. Exactly. The, exactly. What you just highlighted is very true. It's mm. also being used for things that are brought on towered consequences to our exactly. health exactly. as humans and even our yeah. landscape and even exactly. our, you know, even to the climate and all. Thank you so mm. much, Mona. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you so much, Ma. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. All right. Please lower your hand. So um, I'll take... Um, I'll take... Um, how many hands do we have? All these people without names, I won't call you, you can be sure of that. Name your device. I will call Ajala Michael Adigun. Unmute yourself. 
Ajala Michael Adigun. Good afternoon, ma. Good Are afternoon. Ma? Very clearly. Ma, ma, I want you to uh, enlighten me on origin of the operative um, system. Hmm? Origin of? Operative system. Eh? Of what? Socratic system, ma. Socratic. Can you hear me, ma? I'm not getting what you're pronouncing now. Socratic system, ma. Socratic. No, Socratic. Subtractive. <laughs> you yes, ma. The origin came from the Yoruba number ma? system. Hmm. I just wanted to enlighten me on it, ma'am. Uh, yes, I'm speaking now. The origin of the subtractive system came from... It came from... Um, it came from the Yoruba numbering system, which was described as being complex and um, as something that has extreme complexity. So that's where the subtractive system originated from. In Thank which the ma. counting system of the Yorubas made you, makes use of subtraction order. And it's been described as being very complex. And based on that, it was said that they are people skilled in abstract reasoning. And um, that's it. The details of more details of that is in your course material. But that's the basic system that originated from the Yoruba uh, numbering system from, Thank you, from the issue of mathematics, from the idea of mathematics as one of the lost sciences of Africa. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mom. Thanks, Jim. Uh, so mute yourself, lower your hand. I did that for you already. I'll call, so I'm going to call, uh, I'm going to call, it's five o'clock. Hmm? I'm going to call three more people and um, I'll end this class, okay? So I'll call Ade Yinka George, Ade Poju. Unmute yourself. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Uh, thank you for the lecture so far, and thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, too. Okay, and thank you for answering the question and asked in the last week. Okay, about I answered. Ma yes, you answered it. Thank you okay. so much. Right. So um, um, I, want, I just want to uh, I have a question, but before the question, there are a lot of uh, the students asking for area of uh, concentration. Mm. But I remember um, most time you tell us to always attend the class, then do our TMA that we will not have mm. problem with exam. Mm. I did my I, I went ahead and did my TMA yesterday. Mm. I know I noticed that everything from the one that mm. you have been talking in class, they are there in the TMA. Okay, that's yes. good. Yes, they are there in the TMA. Even the question of the Yoruba, whatever I saw it, was there. Mm -hmm. And those are saying okay. that the, the answers are not there. It's not true. All the okay. options are there. Although Thank I didn't get 30 over 30, I got 27. But, see, but that's a very good math. If yes, you score 27 over 30. Yes, 27 over 30. So I noticed that even the TMA helps you to learn. As I'm doing the TMA, I have to refer back to my material. And I'm learning mm -hmm. new things. So I'm just yeah. advising the students, like what you said. And again, some are asking for area of concentration. But mm. it should be wise, because when you are, when you are uh, lecturing, there are mm. some points that you ask us to take note. Yeah. When you say take note, that means you should note that. Okay. It's, it's a complete area of concentration that you don't know. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for so, being so, so smart. Like yes. So thank you so very much. I'm very, very grateful. Then my question now. Okay. Uh, we talk about uh, the development that uh, the, we have now in the, in the 20th century. Mm. 
Then you talk about war, which is a negative uh, uh, development. Okay. But my question is, then before the war, we have uh, we have weapons that were produced, like nuclear yes. weapon mm -hmm. and so on. So my question yes. is, if there are no weapons, mm. won't some countries lord over other countries? If there are no well, nuclear weapons, which some country be have with countries like if if US now they have nuclear weapon, but other mm. countries will be af af afraid to inflate in inflate US because they know that they have a nuclear weapon. So we said it's negative, but me I see it in another way that to some extent is still positive. For mm. for instance, if 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 I have uh, a rifle in my house and my neighbor knows I have a rifle, so. <laughs> Or, you know, somebody can just come and bug into my house. So mm. I think to some, to some extent, it's still positive. Although we're only, we're only seeing the negative part of it. Okay? So mm. that's clarity on that. Then the last and second, your second question is this. We, we, have, we have heard about scientists, uh, physicists, astronomers that have made a lot of discoveries. Mm. Then from the... 18th century, the 19th, then the 20th, then the 21st century. Mm. One we make a discovery and a, uh, and theory, they are now will now come and counter it. So yes. what I want to this fix this. These scientists are they working in isolation? What I'm saying is, for instance, they say two heads are both better than one. If like oh, two or four people are working on something, at least. One should be able to fault it that no, this is not correct. But what I want to know is that are they working in isolation that they, they are just like an island? So this one is doing its own, then it brought his discovery and a theory. Then after some time, another person will come and fault it. So are they okay. working in isolation? So that's my question. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, after him, we have two more, two more people to ask questions and we close the class. No, it's not a question of working in isolation. It's rather that, you know, it advances the frontiers of knowledge. When okay. somebody says something and you're able to think through it okay. and say you could have said it better in this way or this is how it is. That's how knowledge is advanced. So okay. it's actually, if you remember in um, Asian period, when we look at the signs at the Asian period, Looking at yes. those philosophers and uh, pre-Socratic, Thales yes. and Aximander and Aximenes, we said an Aximander instituted the critical tradition in knowledge by disagreeing with Thales and not mm. going sheepishly with what Thales had said. So it's how the frontiers of knowledge is advanced. Nobody would have said it all. Somebody okay. else would still, you know, that's why when you write thesis, they will say recommendation. It means that there is a limit to your own knowledge as a writer and somebody else you, you should be able to leave some things. I mean, your mm. work should be able to generate reaction that somebody else will pick up from. So it's not okay. a question of working in isolation. That's okay. one. Talking about the issue of war, yeah, of course, it, somehow we need um, maybe war equipment or certain, um, certain, certain devices for self-protection or even to protect our territorial integrity, but also we can rule out the misuse of threats okay. and uh, the invention of certain nuclear weapons that has the propensity of ex of making the human race to go into extinction. Mm. Do you understand? So in that <laughs> sense, it's, it leaves much to be desired. If you remember when uh, between uh, is it between America and China? There was a time that there was so much threat of, of nuclear weapon and there was an outcry in the media. And th these are things that have very devastating, mm. devastating uh, effects and, and end results. Look at mm. what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. People there birthing mm. babies. Up to now, they are still having babies that are badly deformed. It's... Mm. It's a result of the kind of weapon that was used, that was thrown, a bomb that was thrown there. So that, that's part of what we're saying. Uh, we're not oblivious of the fact that 
one might need to self-protect oneself and, and all that, protect one's territorial integrity. But there are some uh, weapons of war that have been invented that, you know, it, it leaves much to be desired. So I, I would like to stop there so that I take two more persons. Okay, thank you. Close this class. Thank you. So thank you, too. So okay. I call two more persons. Other people, please send me an email if you feel strongly about your question. And uh, we'll take it up from there. Uh, Are there income, George? Please mute yourself. I'm calling David. So please make your comments short, please. I beg you, make it short. Short comments. Please, can you hear me, Ma? I can hear you. Yes, um, I it really appreciate you? your class. My name is David. Thank you so much, okay. my. Uh, this is, is David my a man or woman? I'm a man, oh. Okay, you're sounding like a woman. Go on. Yeah, that's how my voice. That's how my voice is, ma. So, okay. um, this is my first time attending your class because okay. I I had issues with myself attending classes because I never knew I had a um, student email with the tutor that brought me to the school didn't really put me through what I needed. But this class really brought some knowledge to me. But I really want to say I really don't understand the soft copy that has been given to me because I paid for the materials. But the soft copy that I have with me, since I've been following your class, I could not mm -hmm. follow up because I don't understand the source copy is kind of scattered. I don't, will I say it's scattered mm -hmm. or will I say I don't really know why it's being put through because when mm -hmm. I saw your email this evening, I was in mm -hmm. church. I asked to leave the church. I see you said module two, unit three. I don't really understand it. Please put, please put me through so I can be able to read my course material and follow your next class. So that's, that's my only problem right now. Okay. Are you on the GST WhatsApp page? Yeah, uh, yes, I am on the GSC WhatsApp page. I'm not really. I'm. I'm in like nine groups right now. I don't know which one is the. <laughs> but you should know the name the of the group now. I'm saying the one I mean is like second GST one hundred five history. Yes, and... there are two. So you're there. I if any admin is here, please post the GST course material. You see, the, I, one I can, I... the one I can understand because the one I have right now, I will tell you because when you said uh, module two, sorry, module mm. three or something, and mm. I did not really understand, but I was only taking note of the one that's on screen when you were on the okay. class. I, I, I used to have a particular version of this GST 105 that was quite disjointed as well, but I have a different version now, which I think, think I've posted on either of the group. It could be reposted. That is a single document that contains everything. The one I used to use have different modules, okay? So I yeah. think if you see this one, it, it should be of help to you. About please, course material not being given to you. Wait, yes, please, ma. I don't know if you have the time, eh? Please just help me post mm -hmm. the one you have because the one I have right now is kind of... I've heard really you, David. Brain. I've heard you. I okay, said it should be posted. Thank you, so your course be... material not being given, I, I can't comment on that, but yeah, I will post the one I have, which I think should be better on that group, if nobody does, if, if no and admin does. My, my last try. question is, okay. how far have you gone from the, because at this, my hundred, this, I'm, this is my first time, this is, I'm on the level right now. This is week six. Listen, David, hey. this is week six of Jesus facilitation. Lord. Facilitation is for eight weeks. So that means all, the recordings, lot, all the recordings are on your e-learn for you to watch. Even these will be posted there for you to watch, for you to access. But this is week six of facilitation. And this so is also our week six from week. week one to week five. Exactly. Oh, my God. So we'll call it a class. Thank you so I much, mean, For him. Thank, thank you. you for thank, your time. You. thank you. So I'll call the last but not the least person. The last but not the least person whom should I call? Any girl, any female here? None. I will call. Mm, whom should I call? Chiboizi. Omit yourself. So every other person, send me an email with your question. I will try and respond. Oh yeah, Chiboizi. The last but not the least. Yes, ma. Good evening, ma. Thank Good you evening. very much for, for okay. the lectures. I really appreciate. God bless you, ma. Ma, my okay. question is 
Uh, my question is um, on this, um, is this Cyrus Stars or something like that? Yes, yes, just, Cyrus. Uh, hey, please, Ma, can you please throw more light on that? I didn't get anything at all from that because my... Cyrus is the star. There is Cyrus and there is Cyrus B. Cyrus B is one is that star that um, the Dogon people of Mali, they use. It's of greater significance than Cyrus itself. Cyrus B can't be seen with the naked eye. So okay. when you talk about Cyrus, there is Cyrus, Cyrus and there is Cyrus B. I think yeah. Cyrus B is of huge significance to the Dogon people through which they get their calendar as part of mm. their astronomy. And it can be seen with the naked eye. And the significance of it was said to have sent shockwaves to, to Europe and the scientists at the time it was discovered. The more details on this is in your course material, so you just need to check. But that's okay. the details here. Mm. Okay, I have another question. That is, um, where okay. was the, um, this uh, method of, um, I think, is, um, metallurgy, something like that? Metallurgy, yes. Uh, metallurgy. Where was it found? Like Tanzania, that? in Lake, Lake Victoria, on the shore of Lake Victoria in Tanzania. Tanzania. Ah, am I correct? Okay, ma. I'm not sure I'm correct. Hey, well. I think so. Uh, Tanzania. Let me see. Uh, I'm running through the slides. Okay. I think so. Uh, let's see, let's see. Mm -hmm. I, I think, okay. Metallurgy. Okay. Metallurgy. Yes, I'm correct. Metallurgy, okay. yes. Metallurgy, okay. So, sorry, ma. Yes, ma. Oh, so it's Tanzania. It was found in Tanzania. Lake Victoria in Tanzania, yes. Lake Victoria, okay. Please, ma. Oh, I wasn't in the last class. Sorry, ma. For this last question, I wasn't in. A, I, I wasn't present in the last class. I want to know the things we discussed please just in a... <laughs> i should tell you that check your uh, just... e and watch the video all right okay, our time okay. is over it's not for me to over. tell you that so okay. uh all the other people to meet up at labi oluwa da refer me igawoma benga oyebamiji you may send me an email i'll put my email in the chat now with your question i'll try and answer it okay i can't take longer than this it's five something already it's way past our time noun.edu.ng okay for those people send me an email i will answer with your question so i wish you all thank you very uh, much my God bless i you. wish you all a nice weekend see you next week Thank you, ma. God bless you. Thank you, ma. 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 Thank you